In future, we have started this our section recently. And Dr. Murthy is our chair for Kamsak and SPS. The team is doing very good. I would like to request a couple of things to Professor Gaud here. In India, what is happening, sir? Most of the research is going. I would like to request a couple of things. The implementation part is mostly missing. Most of the research is going. Most of our research is most of our our research at the at the engineering college level. Most of our the IITs, Indian Institute of Sciences, and the primary institutes is going down. But unfortunately, what is happening is that what is happening is that the main students and postgraduate students and just students and postgraduate students that to the theory into practice, particularly in the telecommunication sector and these things. The major hurdle I can feel here is that to theory elaborate and other simulation softwares to the usage and training on that. I hope after this talk also. I hope Dr. Mangal will have a interaction with our people to extend his experience in using the better software to have a simulation methods and guide some of the people in this area. It is a very, very good area and a recent area. I hope you will help us in doing that. Certainly, this talk will enlighten most of the young researchers in our section and they will certainly interact with you, sir. In your talk at the end also, I still request you to kindly suggest some kind of a undergraduate or postgraduate projects or titles or something you interact with five ten minutes with the students or researchers. What the best they can do in implementation part, sir. With this preface, I request to and I request Professor welcome Mangao to welcome and thank you for giving the opportunity. Go ahead, TSR Muthiyar. Thank you, sir, for your valuable, valuable words. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, uh, so now I request uh, our Vice Chair, Dr. Nivesh Chandra Muthiyar, please, inter please introduce our chief guest, Dr. Uh, uh, Professor Mahabhya Manakao to you. Thank you, sir. Yes, I hope my I am audible now. Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Yeah, very clear. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's really a great privilege for me to introduce Professor Mohab Mangal, sir, to to the Vizag Bay section and the people who have gathered for this event today. Uh, Mohab Mangal currently serving as. Uh, serving the Department of Telecommunication Networks Engineering, Department of Electronics Engineering, College of Engineering, University of Bahrain, Isa Town, Kingdom of Bahrain. He has 28 years of active research in telecommunications, networks, applied electromagnetics, antennas, optimization, machine and deep learning applications. He has 20 plus years of teaching experience of telecommunications and electronics courses in UK, USA, Egypt, and Bahrain. He, he published more than 70 uh, research articles, which are indexed in various levels in, in both international journals and conferences, and he has supervised 15 plus PhD and MSc students. He is the program chair of communications major for both undergraduate and post courses and the director of telecommunications. He is the founder of IEEE Communication Society at Bahrain Chapter, uh, uh, Communication Society Bahrain Chapter, and currently also serving at the chapter. He is also serving as vice chair of IEEE Bahrain section and student activity coordinator he received best r8 outstanding branch counselor award for the year 2016 awarded three grants and projects in Bahrain and europe and he is the advisor for egypt scholars and is a board as a board member of society of excellence and research uh, academic Research SER Bahrain and is the chair and member of various academic curriculum research administrative and EBET committees at UO. 
technical Love. program committee, organizing committee, and several prestigious IEEE conferences. He served as chair and member. Three, he is a frequent reviewer of several IEEE journals, among others, and he also served conference general chair at various events. He also national a national commission for academic accreditation and assessment evaluator for kingdom kingdom of saudi arabia since 2019 his research interests are deep learning applications iot vanet uav networks molecular communications etc i am really privileged to introduce you to the gathering over here sir because you have been my uh, uh, during 2014-2013, I have first contact with you on email requesting for various publications that you have uh, published on the concept of antenna arrays, which has been my uh, research, uh, really reference paper for all my research. Thank you very much, sir. Over to you, T.S. Sun, sir. Yeah, thank you, Sir for a nice introduction of our today's chief guest. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, I cordially invite guest of the today's function, today's program, Professor Mohabir Mangal, Department of Berkeley University of Bahrain, to start proceedings. Yes, sir. Please start proceedings, sir. <clears throat> sir, Professor Mangal, please start proceedings, sir. Hello, do you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your, your voice is clear. Hello? Sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Your voice is clear. Yeah, good. Actually, I'm face. Yeah, I I am facing really. Yeah, I, I'm facing a little bit problem with hearing you. Really, uh, the connection from from your side is not uh, so good. So I'm not sure. Do you hear me well? You hear? Yes, sir. Uh, you, you, how how well do you hear? Very clear, me? sir. It is clear. You are very clear, sir. Okay. Screen sharing. Uh, All right. Because sir. I I am I am facing really a lot of trouble to uh, un understand. Yeah. Okay. So I will share now. Uh, I would like to thank you all. For this invitation, uh, and I think you should you should be able to see my screen now. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, we are able to see. Screen shared, sir. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so I would like to thank you all. Uh, thanks to. Uh, uh, VZ uh, Bay section uh, for the uh, joint uh, chapter of uh, Comsoc and uh, Signal Processing. It's always my my pleasure to uh, give lectures for Comsoc uh, chapters, and I would like to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Murthy and Dr. Samir for the invitation and for their uh, professional uh, uh, preparing for this uh, uh, event. And I hope that all uh, will benefit from this. I will try to make it as uh, 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 general as possible. I will not go deeply into equations and, and mathematical models. And uh, hopefully, uh, uh, we can have some discussions at the end. Uh, however, we're facing some uh, uh, problems with network, so I hope it, it works out. So the, the, uh, uh, do you hear me now? Can, can I continue? It, everything is OK? Uh, yes, sir, it is clear. You can continue, sir. Your voice is clear, so you can continue. The screen is also visible. Okay, great. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. All right. So, uh, so I want to uh, to give my technical talk today about uh, 5G uh, and uh, 5G uh, 
application for millimeter waves. So the, the presentation, the webinar will uh, discuss uh, the 5G status deployment around the world, the 5G spectrum, uh, non-ionizing radiation, and we will, we will discuss uh, uh, millimeter wave uh, beam forming and applications. Uh, exposure to, this is another topic really, is uh, every time we make a lecture about uh, 5G, so the people start to ask us about uh, the radiation effect. So the second part of my lecture will be about uh, the exposure level guidelines for uh, and health risks from uh, exposing to 5G radiation and millimeter waves. So this is my uh, uh, webinar outlines. This is the references. So uh, one of the uh, most important references about uh, health uh, risk of 5G is this reference by the report. And uh, also there is a new uh, reference in 2020 uh, by Professor Aluni and his group from Saudi Arabia is about health risks for 5G exposure. And also, uh, uh, I used uh, some uh, standards from uh, World uh, Health Organization and ICNER uh, organizations. So, as you all know, that uh, we have every 10 years uh, a new generation of mobile phones. So, nowadays, we are uh, in the doom of uh, uh, beginning of 5G uh, generation in 2020. And I, I remember we, uh, uh, like, uh, every uh, 10 years we got this in new generations, like in 2010 there was the 4G, and now we are uh, talking about 5G. Uh, uh, and uh, today I am going to present the, the uh, uh, benefits and why we use 5G and uh, what is the need for it and uh, the, the uh, We'll discuss the health risk of, uh, we will focus on the health risk of this uh, great system. Uh, as you know, the, the drive for going to 5G was Internet of Things. Internet of Things, as you all know, is uh, nowadays is coming to, uh, the objective will be 50 billion devices connected in the coming uh, uh, two years. And this will enable a smart city, smart workspace, and uh, uh, workplace, uh, uh, smart uh, uh, vehicles, e everything will be connected to internet. So that's why we need a very strong uh, 5G networks. Uh, regarding the architecture of 5G networks and how it differs from 4G, it's mainly in the uh, infra uh, infrastructure, in the backbone. Uh, so, as, uh, uh, we used to teach in the cellular network architecture uh, mobile phone uh, base stations. We call it base stations. And then the 4G, we call it E node B, E N B. And for the 5G, we will call it G N B, which is next generation uh, node B. For uh, the radio access network part in the LTE, uh, uh, the new term for it, it will be new radio. So you will find this term. Uh, you need to get familiar with the 5G uh, systems. So uh, uh, NR will replace the RAN for uh, 5G. And for the, for the core part, we will call it NGC, uh, which is next generation core for the... So there is evolution in the uh, core and in the radio uh, part uh, uh, for the architecture. So now the, the current situation now of, for the launching and deployment of 5G, there is non-standalone uh, uh, systems uh, and standalone uh, systems. So currently, many uh, uh, service providers are using non standalone uh, systems like this. And in the near future, it will be separated, like you, you will have a separate 5G core and 5G standalone network with the devices. So your, your mobile phones will switch between 4G and 5G and can complete, completely work on 5G. Uh, in, in the near uh, future. But nowadays, it's still connected with uh, 4G. For the uh, uh, antennas, uh, uh, you will uh, find that uh, in many countries now, uh, where they started deployment, and here in the Middle East, we have many uh, uh, operators, they already started to launch uh, antennas for 5G cells. It works on 3.5 gigahertz, and as you can see here, it can uh, be built on top of the uh, old 4G uh, towers. 
or uh, connected uh, via uh, separately uh, uh, on top of buildings like this. And uh, as you can see here, the, uh, a new radio uh, will be applied for these systems. So now uh, the difference between uh, 4G and 5G mainly is that 5G will also uh, work on different frequencies. So there will be a lower uh, and smaller areas uh, coverage of this kind of antennas uh, compared to the uh, larger areas. Uh, so the concept of a small areas, uh, a small surge is introduced to 5G as we all know. Now, this is the current situation on uh, the deployment of 5G, there is uh, around the world, there's about uh, uh, 56,000 uh, commercial uh, available uh, network uh, sites. And uh, now it's everywhere, uh, and some pre released even in uh, um, Asia, in India, some parts of India, and um, Around the world, there is uh, around 30% of the world countries will access will have access to 5G uh, during this year, and uh, expected that by 25 there will be 3.6 billion 5G connections. Now, regarding the 5G devices, uh, as you may all know, that uh, Samsung last year in March they uh, launched the first uh, hand handset that support 5G was released and then followed by Huawei and Nokia and the latest one was by uh, iPhone uh, in October uh, 2020 they launched iPhone 12 and it covers the high band and low band 5G and 5G plus and these are the bands that are supported by the phones in the United States and as you can see it's all in the range of sub 6 uh, gigahertz uh, however it also support if you look to the last two here it's 39 gigahertz and 28 gigahertz, which is millimeter waves, the one we are going to discuss now. So the, the new phones, new handsets support, uh, uh, when you buy your next uh, smartphone, you need to make sure it supports uh, sub-6 gigahertz and also millimeter uh, wave. Uh, definitely, the, the, the smartphone itself will contain, will, will contain a separate antenna like this one, for 5G uh, antenna that support millimeter waves, and uh, this will be uh, manufactured uh, in all uh, coming smartphones. When we talk about 5G, what is the difference between 5G and, and uh, 4G? So this graph is very nice, really, because it shows the uh, increase in cell age data rate uh, for 5G uh, with respect to uh, 4G with this ratio. Cell spectral efficiency will, will increase, the mobility, cost efficiency, uh, and connection and latency. Latency is also a very important factor here in, in 5G. So the latency for the network will become to uh, one millisecond, which is uh, amazing, uh, really, uh, figure uh, for uh, uh, 5G. So if you compare 4G and 5G, so uh, the uh, Peak data rates will go uh, from uh, 1 gigabit per second to 20 gigabit per second. Uh, this is ideally, actually, in, uh, and uh, peak if in ideal conditions. However, this will never be achieved uh, practically. We, I will show you now the, the practical uh, uh, data rates. Uh, regarding the experience data rate will be around uh, 100 megabit per second. For uh, a connection density, this is very important because we are going to, in the future, with IoT, we need uh, a connectivity of uh, uh, millions and millions of devices. So this uh, connectivity density for 5G will reach a million for in kilometer square. And this is a, a very important uh, property for 5G systems. For mobility, support uh, is improved. Uh, air traffic capacity improved, as you can see. The latency is uh, one millisecond compared to 10 millisecond. For the latency, uh, uh, it is very important for uh, IoT applications, and uh, in particular for uh, 
future uh, autonomous cars with uh, uh, internet of vehicles and, and uh, uh, self-driving cars, you need a very uh, high uh, speed networks with latency of one millimeter seconds will will uh, will be uh, so crucial for this kind of, of systems. Uh, reliability uh, and position, uh, uh, positioning accuracy, everything improved compared to uh, 4G. So the applications, uh, as you all know, it's uh, uh, from e-health, uh, voice, uh, improved uh, 3D videos, augmentation, uh, augmented reality. Uh, so uh, everything will be uh, used for uh, 5G uh, networks. So the key technologies for 5G and IoT, uh, millimeter wave is the main feature of 5G that is different from uh, previous generations. So what about uh, millimeter waves, why we use it, and uh, how it is going to be used for 5G? Also, uh, massive MIMO uh, is a very important property technology in 5G. Uh, multi uh, uh, red uh, radio access uh, technology uh, and advanced uh, device to device and, and, and uh, machine to machine and then small cell deployment. These are the main uh, key technologies for 5G uh, networks. So if we uh, discuss, I'm, I am sure that all of you, uh, uh, if you are communication major, you're familiar with this, this is the spectrum. So for the students, we, we always start, anybody start communication, uh, need to start with this. Uh, uh, so we we divide our spectrum into uh, the ra the the range before the light and the range after the light uh, visible light. So this is the microwave and millimeter wave here in this area, and this part is what we call ionizing radiation. Uh, so this is also uh, uh, important to understand because this is ionizing radiation. It it is it could be able to. Uh, 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 ionize uh, atoms, and uh, this is a little bit dangerous for uh, human uh, body exposure. Uh, however, uh, if we are talking about this uh, area, is is non-ionizing radiation, uh, and we, I will discuss this later. So we are we are talking about this area of spectrum um, between microwave and millimeter uh, waves. For the uh, non-ionizing radiation, uh, uh, as you know, it is. Uh, from uh, uh, it, it starts from low frequencies to uh, very uh, low frequencies to uh, extremely low, very low, low, high, medium, and the microwave, uh, and then uh, the millimeter waves, and go to the ionizing. And uh, so this is also uh, uh, very important uh, to to understand where exactly the, the uh, operating. Uh, uh, spectrum of the millimeter wave uh, for 5G. So the spectrum of the 5G will be uh, for uh, we we divide it into two parts. We call it a sub uh, 6G, which is uh, this part, and millimeter wave is uh, this part. So the current deployment in uh, maybe we can say that in 90 percent of the uh, uh, server server uh, service providers around the world they use six. Uh, Six uh, sub six uh, G uh, range, and they sell the license for this. Um, the government for this range. However, in the future, we also going to use this uh, higher uh, millimeter uh, wave bands. And this is actually uh, that's why we go for uh, more capacity, more users, uh, more small cells. So we need to use uh, millimeter uh, waves. Uh, for uh, the future applications. So, uh, as we said, you can divide it into low frequency, high frequency, and millimeter wave. This is for 5G spectrum and different applications. And for millimeter waves, it will be used in small cells and uh, a very a, a direct line of sight applications. The advantages of using a, a millimeter wave is it's uh, uh, huge bandwidth and it's better for the spectrum and the energy efficiency. However, the disadvantages is that it has less penetration power uh, for solid and, uh, and walls and buildings and higher power flows and uh, it's prone to uh, uh, shadowing and uh, blockage. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, we did some research in, in uh, uh, my team and in uh, uh, about MIMO uh, technology, and this is multi-user MIMO, as you can see. Uh, MIMO is, uh, if you have multiple input and multiple output, uh, I'm sure that you all uh, may know more about this uh, now. MIMO has become uh, well-known, uh, and it's multiple uh, antennas, so in order to increase the capacity, so now we're talking about massive MIMO when uh, the number of antennas is a very high reach to uh, hundreds rather than uh, two or three or four like before. So we, we are also uh, using multi-user MIMO. It means that the uh, users also will have a multiple antennas. And massive, it means many uh, antennas. Uh, so, like for for example, for massive uh, MIMO, this is a, a, a practical system for massive MIMO for 124 and uh, 64 uh, antennas for NTT Docomo uh, uh, and Lund uh, University uh, prototype uh, massive MIMO system for 5G. So why we used uh, massive MIMO and beam forming? Because in the 5G, what will happen actually is that rather than sending the uh, coverage for uh, a, 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 a cover an area like this, so you will uh, the the, the uh, beams will be directed to each user, and each user can get a different uh, rate, different uh, um, uh, surface. So, for example, if a user using, like for our case here, video and uh, uh, meeting, so we need uh, higher bandwidth, so you can give this user a higher bandwidth and you can, uh, you can uh, adjust the uh, rate. So now, uh, with using millimeter wave, we managed to uh, narrow the uh, beam, form, uh, beam forming and to uh, uh, use uh, uh, a different user with different uh, uh, surfaces and different rates. So this is uh, uh, also uh, um, uh, we we also need uh, deployment of full uh, fully uh, um, full dense uh, of uh, fully dimension uh, uh, MIMO uh, system uh, with a, a horizontal uh, beam forming and vertical uh, beam forming as well. Uh, so we call it full dimension uh, MIMO, and we have also a very large MIMO. We have a hyper MIMO. We have large scale antenna systems. So for uh, uh, 5G, also with the beam forming, we managed to separate the uh, control uh, uh, channels rather, uh, and the data channels, as you can see here, and the user can uh, connect to uh, five small cells. And with 5G macro cells on a different um, uh, traffic uh, offloading and connectivity. Uh, we did some research here in my team about uh, this beam forming actually uh, with a massive uh, array system. And Dr. Samir and uh, uh, mentioned some practical examples for uh, uh, systems. And I, I recommend that building this uh, beam former is, is a very challenging uh, way to uh, build uh, this uh, beam former really in, in the lab. And uh, we have uh, research going on this uh, now. And as you can see, there is uh, 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 normally we have in the beam former the analog beam former and the, uh, the digital beam former. So the, uh, also we need to uh, model the uh, channel. Uh, like this uh, equation here, and we consider the uh, 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 transmitter and the receiver antennas, and we can model the channel uh, using these formulas. And then we try to uh, uh, achieve a higher capacity with, with this channel modeling uh, using simulation and with the measurements at, uh, and using a, a layout code word with a beam forming the antennas to achieve this is the lower one is uh, analog beam forming. The, the uh, upper uh, curve is uh, optimum full beam forming. So now we are trying to uh, get the benefit of two, but the full uh, digital beam forming is so complicated. So we are uh, actually trying to model a hybrid uh, beam former. Uh, uh, this is uh, a research published in uh, this year uh, in uh, 
uh, last year actually in um, uh, journal of wireless and mobile computing and uh, uh, regarding the uh, uh, practical uh, antennas nowadays we have macro cell uh, uh, antennas for 5g it is 200 watt for the uh, medium uh, which is micro cell and pico cell it is up to uh, 250 milliwatt and for the femto uh, indoor uh, uh, it, it the power will be around uh, 100 milliwatt and this will be indoors in shopping centers malls and and so on and uh, each one can serve a different number of users as you can see and uh, it will be deployed uh, around all cities uh, very soon uh, for the 5G uh, systems. So the work now is already going on for this. So now the second part of my uh, presentation, I'm not sure how much time still left. Can you please let me know about this? Uh, okay, so 20 to 30 minutes, 20 minutes uh, minimum. Yeah, you can take up to 30 minutes. Okay, so I'm, uh, uh, is everything okay to hear me well? Everything yes, is okay. Yes, sir. Everything is everything is okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, actually, the second part of my uh, lecture, I will I will need to go to a different uh, uh, topic. It's about health effects uh, and how dangerous is this new five uh, G system and millimeter waves. So the the main uh, the main issue here is that there is a phobia from uh, radiation since early the beginning of mobile phones, since the starting of the second generation. And every uh, new generation comes, uh, so the people start again talking about this. But this time with the millimeter wave usage, so there is a, a very uh, a big debate about health effects of uh, uh, mobile phone uh, effects, but with the current situation of, with Corona, so everybody now forget about this. But once Corona uh, finish, hopefully soon, uh, so the people will uh, again return, uh, speak about the uh, long-term effect of the uh, millimeter waves. And let me summarize for you the, uh, uh, and the, because this is a, a, a going problem since uh, early uh, the start of this century is everybody is talking about the health effect and biological effects from the radiation from electromagnetic waves. So we divide the, the radiation into a thermal effect and non-thermal effect. So we have for the thermal effect, all the standards, every uh, company uh, manufacture a new a smartphone. So they go and check with the thermal effect and the SAR uh, a specific absorption rate and the exposure guidelines. However, no, no one uh, concern about this non-thermal uh, effects. And this is the main issue of uh, the main problem of uh, that worry many people is the non-thermal effect. So let me explain it uh, more. Uh, so uh, this is actually uh, uh, experiments done in the uh, uh, past uh, decade about the effect of mobile phones uh, on the animals, worms, uh, vegans, uh, pigeons, uh, chicken, and they find that there is uh, uh, a positive effects and that there is some uh, uh, experiments are not give, giving a good results really concerning uh, the, the exposure level and uh, they find uh, that also that for the non-thermal effect the long-term effect that there is also uh, some doubts about uh, uh, possible carcinogenic uh, carcinogenic uh, promotion or cancer promotion, uh, especially for the brain tumors, acoustic uh, neuroma, uh, the um, alteration of DNA damage, uh, imperio. So all these are uh, making the people uh, worry. And for the millimeter wave, special atten attention will be given to the eye, uh, uh, cornea lens, and the oct uh, ocular clouding. And for the skin, so the, with the with the millimeter wave, the main the main problem is uh, the the eye and the skin effect from the millimeter wave. So these are some uh, experiments done about brain tumor and the uh, about uh, on the rats. But I need you to uh, uh, 
pay attention here that for this experiment, they, they expose uh, the rats to a very, very high uh, power uh, uh, radiation. And this is much higher than the, the, the guidelines and the radiation that we are using for our phones. And they find that uh, uh, there is no uh, uh, tumor generation, or they find a very, very little uh, findings that it is sometimes is not repeated. So that, uh, that uh, was uh, a very hard uh, research to do. It's about uh, uh, long term effect of, of the uh, phones. So there is a, a big project uh, uh, conducted in, in uh, between two, 2000 2012 in Europe and um, about the risk of the brain tumors and the uh, finding that it, it did not prove any uh, connection. And there is also a Danish report, uh, but there is some people they uh, doubt about uh, the result, these results, and in in 2011, the World Health Organization uh, uh, announced that there is a possibility of uh, carcinogenic, uh, it means uh, cancer uh, risk uh, from uh, the mobile phones. So uh, the debate uh, still going on regarding the non-thermal effect. So what the company is doing now is focusing on the thermal effect. And there is also conspiracy theories about 5G. And it was, uh, that was uh, last year, but these, uh, these series are uh, really uh, mm. mostly dismissed. Uh, uh, mostly yeah. dismissed. Yeah. And uh, excuse me, there is some speaking uh, sound here. Okay, so some some uh, last year uh, some uh, a protest happened around the world. There was uh, a protest day against 5G radiation uh, on 25 January 2020, and there is uh, uh, 270 uh, uh, protest around the world uh, to stop 5G, and also there is some uh, who works about 5G radiation that it kills the birds and and kills the trees, but all these are really not scientific and not evident. And also they tried to link uh, Wuhan and, and COVID with the uh, 5G. And uh, if, you, if you hear the news about uh, what happened in UK, that some people go and, and uh, fire, the, uh, fire uh, over the uh, 5G uh, masts. And all this uh, news war uh, was uh, really uh, uh, not uh, based on scientific uh, 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 findings. So the uh, uh, conclusion is that it is a fake a theories are not based on any scientific uh, evidence. And regarding this is the first uh, part regarding non thermal effect. Regarding the thermal effects, uh, as you all know, we use uh, for the microwave a frequency of 2.4, which is very close to the uh, 4G and 5G frequencies. However, this is very concentrated and very high uh, power, and it's inside an oven. So it's a completely different scenario from uh, mobile phones if you compare the power. So the typical uh, level radiation is very high compared to mobile phones. And for the thermal effects uh, on uh, mobile phones, it is fine that uh, for the uh, effect to be effective, uh, for the thermal, uh, uh, the limit will be, a threshold will be one degree for the whole body. For the eye cataract, uh, five, uh, th uh, five uh, body temperature degree. And for the skin, the sensation is one degree. And for the brain sensation, 20 degree. And the, for the brain uh, or neuron damage, you need 4.5 degree. So uh, according to this threshold, they put a limitations for exposure and that they found that uh, uh, we should not exceed this limit uh, to uh, uh, be able to be in the safe side. So regarding the, um, uh, our research here, we, we can uh, develop uh, uh, radiation calculation inside 
uh, the head, if you get on the computer using finite element, finite, uh, finite difference method, you can calculate the uh, radiation uh, from the head on uh, uh, model of the uh, realistic model of the head and also for uh, different kind of handsets. Also for the whole, whole body you can uh, simulate. The second way is, this is, a com this is all computer modeling. The second uh, method is to do far field measurements uh, using uh, far field uh, probes. Uh, for example, this is an equipment we used for a spectrum analyzer. Uh, and uh, you can use this to measure in different uh, locations. You can measure uh, uh, the exact um, spectral density. And for example, here, this is a, an experiment uh, that has been done in, in, uh, in uh, Bahrain here with a, uh, a base station, and you can uh, calculate uh, the power uh, radiation, power density, for for different locations along the way with uh, away from a base station that it was here so uh, for uh, all uh, this uh, uh, the statement here is that uh, recent surveys uh, show that the exposure from base station range from 0.002 to 2% of the levels of the international exposure uh, guidelines so what is the ex international exposure guidelines uh, it is I will show you later on the table. Regarding the millimeter wave, so what is the problem with millimeter wave? The problem with millimeter wave, it is uh, higher uh, frequencies. And uh, in this case, we will not use the specific absorption rate like uh, microwaves. So we will use uh, 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 the, um, yeah, there is two, there is two uh, quantities you can use. Uh, power, uh, uh, flux density or uh, power, power density calculations, S, uh, which is in watt per, met per meter square. This is for the uh, mic uh, millimeter wave. And for the uh, microwave and for the lower frequencies, we use SAR for uh, uh, dosimetric uh, parameters. So now, we, uh, for millimeter wave, we need to work on uh, the power density. And uh, this is the equation uh, well known for everybody, uh, electric field by magnetic field. Uh, and uh, this is the, the SAR for the uh, microwave. So for, uh, I need you to uh, pay attention, please, to these uh, numbers. So for ICNIR, um, so for the uh, millimeter wave, uh, the power uh, density limit that should not be exceeded uh, to achieve these heating uh, limits is one uh, milli watt per centimeter square or 10 watt per meter square. So this is the limit that should not be exceeded at any point for millimeter uh, waves uh, for any uh, base station. So anybody uh, complain about millimeter wave, if you uh, go do the uh, uh, measurements and compare it with these two numbers, if it is less than uh, uh, this is, uh, a safe uh, uh, scenario. So for ECNERB, it's uh, uh, also for the SAR now, this is uh, the second, uh, as I told you, there is two uh, here, there is two uh, uh, measurements, the SAR and PD. So PD, uh, as we show, for the SAR, the uh, regulations, the standard should be two SAR, Watt per kilogram, uh, or uh, for this range, okay. And if you take it averaged over a ten a gram, and uh, this is the table for uh, standards for uh, sub uh, G and uh, millimeter waves. So now you can do uh, measurements and compare your results with the standards, as you can see here. We are uh, taking measurements and compare our results with uh, SAR and uh, power density, and you can compare it with. Uh... So for the dosimetry techniques, we have either analytical uh, measurements or uh, numerical. So this is, for example, for uh, 
numerical, you can do it on the computer. Measurements, you need anechoic chambers, you need uh, probes, you need uh, uh, actually practical for, to measure the exposure. And analytical is uh, mathematically, and this is uh, very hard also to, um, because it's a very complex uh, electromagnetic uh, propagation problem. So for the uh, uh, unechoic chamber measurements, you need to make sure that there is no reflections, the situation, and uh, you need to uh, uh, measure with the probe the, the field. So this is a lab experiment, so we, we can fill uh, the uh, material with dielectric uh, liquid here, uh, a liquid that simula simulates the dielectric material of the human body. So this is for the lab. For the millimeter wave, the, the effect, as I told you, we focus on the eye and the skin only. So for the eye, uh, uh, if you can allow me just five or 10 minutes to finalize my, my speech. Uh, so this is uh, the, uh, all right. So this is the problem with millimeter wave. We, we pay uh, high attention to the eye. Uh, so there is, uh, because the eye is very vulnerable to uh, millimeter wave induced uh, heating uh, and the heating, everybody knows that the heating with the eye will cause a big problem. So, uh, because the lack of uh, blood flow and also uh, 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 we should take care of this uh, issue. So now regarding the, the uh, uh, summary of the ocular damage, uh, for this experiment. So on the rabbit eye, uh, as you can see this image, this uh, uh, one, two, three, four experiment exposing millimeter wave to an eye of a rabbit, okay? And non-human uh, eyes, non-human eyes and rabbit, okay? So these are four uh, experiments. All of them, they did not uh, damage, uh, uh, no damage. However, the, there are some damages and begin to recover on the next day. And this is also a little bit damage. But uh, if you, if you uh, look to this number, and if you remember these, the guidelines that we set, so this is 50. And if you go uh, back to the guidelines here, it's one. So can you see, this is one, and this is the experiment is done over uh, 50. So the guidelines is uh, on one, and here, this experiment is exposing uh, a rabbit eye to a 50 milliwatt, which is 50 times more than uh, uh, the maximum uh, guidelines that uh, is uh, standardized. So that's why we get this uh, effect. So you cannot say that this is uh, will be, will be a harmful for the uh, uh, human. However, this shows some indications. And this is another paper on uh, the ocular effect of the exposure of 40 and 70 and 95 of the millimeter wave and some uh, also very minor findings uh, for the eye. For the skin, skin is uh, different from the millimeter waves. So if you are uh, uh, beyond, as we, as we see here in, uh, um, in my results before, I show you the uh, here, Yeah, in this model, so uh, as you can see here, sorry, yeah, yeah, here, for example, if you put the, the uh, this is, okay, so this is uh, uh, exposure from antenna from the front, okay, so you can see that the uh, penetration here inside the head, uh, also from if the antenna is at the back, so this is the penetration. So this is for the millimeter wave, uh, this experiment was done on uh, 1800 megahertz, okay, 1800 megahertz. If you apply the same antenna, but with higher frequency, uh, if you're talking about 26, 28 gigahertz, so this, this penetration of the wave will be very superficial on only in very, uh, very uh, superficial on the skin issue, uh, skin uh, layer only. So it will not penetrate all this into, into the head. So going to a millimeter uh, wave, it will, 
it will be superficial uh, absorption. Uh, however, so this will affect more the skin. So that's why there is uh, another experiment on uh, the skin only effect. So the skin has a, a layer, uh, 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 a dermis and dermis, and uh, this is more liquid, this is more uh, stiff, uh, this is more moisture, and uh, uh, they, they did experiment on this. And the conclusion is that on 60 gigahertz exposure, it is shown that 26 to 41 percent of the power is reflected at the air slash skin interface for the normal incidence. Okay, and this value uh, uh, deviates significantly for elimination under uh, oblique, and it is found that uh, for this high frequency of the skin, that only 0.3 to 0.4 millimeter of the skin is affected from this penetration. So now we we uh, uh, with going to uh, higher uh, frequency, so the the penetration will be less. However, this area will be focused. Uh, uh, electromagnetic wave will be focused on the first uh, area of the surface. So now uh, the conclusion is that the peak steady state temperature elevation for 10 to 50 milliwatt exposure uh, in one layer human tissue is about 0.1 to 0.5 centigrade. So if you stand, uh, for example, if you compare this value is very, very small. And if you compare it, if you stand in the sun for a while, you, your, your skin temperature will be uh, increased much, much higher than this uh, ratio. And uh, uh, however, for this, uh, for the three layer uh, human tissue model, uh, so this is uh, 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 exposure uh, level uh, and increase in the temperature. So that's why the 5G network uh, is uh, uh, become more confined uh, in uh, the skin and the eye. However, uh, no consequences uh, are proven yet about the health, uh, public health uh, uh, effect. So the, to conclude my uh, presentation, uh, we presented the 5G and the uh, uh, 5G uh, millimeter wave. Uh, we, we discussed the non-ionizing and ionizing radiation and the new features for 5G. And also uh, we discussed uh, the, the 5G uh, propaganda or phobia uh, should not be followed and there should be always uh, improved electromagnetic field public awareness and risk uh, communication assessments. So we should uh, carry on more research on this area and uh, uh, actually using 5G and, and millimeter wave is really uh, uh, will be beneficial for humanity and for all of us. So this is the end of my presentation and thanks so much for listening. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I will be ready for any questions. Thank you very much, sir, for enlightening your lecture on 5G and millimeter waves and application, particularly uh, health issues you discussed and uh, you discussed your experiments also. Now we have, there are three questions, sir. Uh, can I ask? Yes, sure. Go ahead. Now, yeah. Okay. yeah. The first question is, uh, as there is some effect on the millimeter wave on several organs, can we use this technology for curing diseases? Uh, uh, definitely, uh, it is already used for, uh, uh, again, if, if you go here uh, to the spectrum. Okay. So uh, then uh, what is the major difference between the 5G and 6G? Yeah, so now uh, this is, uh, just a minute, here. So this is the spectrum here. So as I told you, for uh, uh, ionizing radiation, it is used for uh, um, uh, cancer uh, radiation. So it's all here in this area, which is ionizing radi radiation. And this this radiation is a special radiation because it is it has the ability to uh, to ionize the cells, and uh, it is used for curing and for uh, uh, the cancer uh, cells. It can be uh, uh, 
uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, cure it using this radiation, right? For this, yes. this kind of radiation, yeah. This kind is a non-ionizing radiation. So uh, I need you always to, to separate between ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. For uh, regarding your, your second question, for 6G technology, it's now it's just concept, uh, nothing new, uh, nothing standard yet. So uh, don't believe anybody uh, talk about 6G. So 6G is improvement for 5G. So uh, actually, uh, 6G research will 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 uh, will go more into small cells, uh, more into uh, uh, more handovers. Uh, there is a new research on uh, uh, intelligent uh, surfaces. So uh, any new concepts in in uh, in communications that will increase the capacity, increase the rate, will be applied for 6 6G. So. Uh, it's it's a very broad area, and uh, the research will 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 be open for all research groups around the world. Thank you, sir. And my last question: yeah. These are from audience, sir. Can we say that the IoT and five G have coevolved? Have what? Can we say that the IoT and five G have coevolved? Coevolved. You what? Ah, yeah, Sorry, I can't hear. Co 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 evolved. Okay, yeah, can... and uh, you answered Max. Uh, you answered all the questions. Yeah. So thank you very much, sir. Right. Now I thank request uh, Samir. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Now I request Samir Garu, please uh, uh, speak few words on this uh, occasion. Yes, sir. Uh, the last question actually it was. Uh, like, can we say that the IoT co-evolved with 5G? Because uh, there were, uh, as you mentioned earlier in the presentation, that uh, with the evolution yeah. of yeah. this 5G, uh, there was some advantage to the IoT also, because it was the more major thing that is helping the IoT. Uh, IoT, yeah, yeah. I didn't hear IoT. Okay, IoT. Yeah. All right, I got it now. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, without 5G, actually, we will not be able to uh, uh, use IoT. We, for IoT, in the near future, we're talking about billions of, of devices. So uh, the, the Wi-Fi will not be uh, suitable for some cases uh, because it's Wi-Fi is indoor. The current 4G will not be able to uh, accommodate all these new devices. So you are talking about 50 billion uh, IP address, uh, so you need a 5G as a technology to serve IoT, right? So do you agree with me on this? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, that was really a great discussion, sir. Uh, so you have really addressed several uh, uh, points which are in demand now, which people have, should know, as you mentioned. That there is uh, there is a fake news going around uh, the applications of the 5G uh, affecting the corona and how it is. Uh, yes. It was really a fake news and you have given a very good clarity on it. And we have also gone through some good articles, but your presentation has given a much more clarity than any other. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I'll, 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 I'll be I'll be happy also to share the presentation with you, Dr. Samir. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, thanks for the invitation, and we'll keep in touch. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'm very happy to see that uh, communication society is active in your area, and and also in re region ten. So uh, yes. you are doing a great job, uh, guys. Yeah, thank you, thank you, much, sir. And now one more point is left. Now I request <laughs> Srimad Hema, Madam, EC member of Comsoc SP chapter, to, to propose vote of thanks. Thank you. Yes, sir. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, dear Mr. Sir. Uh, good evening, one and all. I am a EC member, wish to propose vote of thanks on behalf of IEEE Comsoc SP Society Joint Chapter of Visag Bay Section uh, for this invited talk on MMW applications and 5G. 
by Professor Mohabay Mangaud, University of Bahrain. Thank you, sir. And to begin this, uh, first I would like to thank Dr. S. Lakshmi Narayana Garu, Chair IEEE Vizag Bay section for this uh, valuable guidance to make this event to be happen. And I express uh, my sincere thanks to our resource person, Professor Mahab Mangaud, for his excellent and inspired talk on this day, which is a uh, very relevant to present scenario. Thank you, sir, for your valuable and uh, inspiring presentation. And uh, your years of research based on MM waves and their applications, impacts, and your depth of understanding and your ability to present the subject in such an interesting way produced a very nice session on this day, sir. Once again, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Yes, thanks sir. So much. Thank you, sir. Really, sir, uh, this is uh, uh, presently we are dealing with uh, this uh, mobile communication subject, sir. Just uh, we're studying on the differences between 4G like that. And you have given a, an advance uh, on the topic that is regarding 5G and uh, with this uh, millimeter waves and the MIMO technologies Perfect. also, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. And, thank you. Yes, sir. And I would like to thank all respected executive body members of IEEE and this society for their constant support with which this event is at this level today. Thank you all members. And I would like to express my sincere thanks to the faculty members and uh, student friends of various colleges and employees of different organizations for their nice participation and to be with us throughout the presentation and uh, for, for paying their uh, interest. Thank you all. Thank you all the participants. Finally, yeah. I would like to thank the organizers that is the entire team of IEEE Comsoc SP Society Join chapter for making this event a grand success. Thank you. Thank you, one and all, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank so, you. Uh, we will keep in touch and I hope to see you all again soon. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Sir, sir one more thing. Yeah. Sir, Professor Man. Sir, can yes. we uh, uh, use the recorded uh, session of this event? Yes, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank and you. Thank I, you. I think, we, yeah, uh, yeah, we, I also, I sent you an uh, uh, email uh, uh, with the presentation uh, yes, on sir. Dropbox link, so you will find it. Uh, yeah. So you can also use it. Yes, uh, yes, and, we, and, and we can keep uh, uh, connection. Uh, we have also... Uh, some uh, research going on and we can cooperate on this with uh, I have also uh, many students from India uh, here living in Bahrain and living in the Middle East and I think it would be good opportunity to keep the links between region 8 and uh, region 10 and yeah so, so please, uh, yeah please, please feel, feel free to uh, be in contact uh, with with us and we'll uh, try to cooperate and research more sure sir uh, you are uh, sure. actually you are very cooperative that we know because in 2013 14 also i have sent an email which you have responded very promptly helped me for my research in antenna errors in that time you know, oh great great thank you <laughs> i didn't know this <laughs> actually we have we have also uh, many conferences here so we'll be happy to invite all of you and uh, we will keep in contact uh, dr samir yeah yeah thank you sir thank you very much yeah i share thank so you much. sir thank take you. care take care have a nice day bye bye yes, bye sir. thank you sir thank you. So, so, so we are closing the session. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, all the participants, once again. And thank you, uh, Sanjeev uh, Gaonkar. Uh, I think he is there in the group. Must be. Yeah, he is from uh, Bangalore, sir. He, oh, he has, fine. Yeah. Their section, is, uh, their uh, student branch and their student branch chapter students have also joined along with oh, wow. Very nice, sir. Very nice, sir. Thank you. Uh, 